because in the physical vacuum, there is no differentiation. Fundamentally, I'm differentiated by definition, but it is self-referential. That's why it's a fractal, because it's self-similar. It's self-referential, and that has some profound implications for things like the unseen spirit stuff and consciousness and speciation and individuation within a species. The way that works in the non-physical stuff complies with the same kind of laws as the physical stuff, but it all deals with non-local, non-linear field effects. And so we have a very interesting corollary here that now just comports with everything you've described in your presentation. All right. This is the famous bohm aharonov experiment that says even when you block all the magnetic fields, if you exert a non-local field effect, a scalar effect, you still have an effect on the system. It says that there is a ubiquitous distribution of non-local fields in the universe. And now, I guess since 86, 87, most physicists have accepted it, but nobody has incorporated it into the, into the textbooks. This experiment's not in the textbooks. They don't talk about it. Because it fundamentally alters the model. All right, what is mass? Mass is not an a priori intrinsic property at all, but rather a product of underlying scalar interactions arising from the physical vacuum via the zero point, which create the effects identified by science and compliance with self-organizing criticality. Mass is a product of interaction. And we're going to show you exactly how that happens. Any of you recognize this photograph? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a photograph of a solar mass ejection coronal event about to happen. And what you're looking at here are literally electron tornadoes. Huge, gigantic electron tornadoes, except that instead of being like they are on, on this planet, these babies are pure energy. And it turns the model of science upside down because what we now know about this is that it is far hotter here than it is at the center. The electric model of the sun is backwards. Whoa. So this gives him real trouble. He's the astrophysicist here. <laughs> Gives him real trouble. But now we have hard, empirical, verifiable evidence that's pretty close by that says that our notion about how the sun works, that it's very hot at the center and gets cooler as it goes out, is not true. What's happening is that the same functions that operate on the planet in terms of self-organizing events that follow archetypal shapes operate on the sun with the same result. It's far hotter on the surface than it is in the center. And that's not what the model tells us. And it's important because it tells us some things. Look, in 1998, the Stanford Collaboration brought together 60 scientists. And they did something that hadn't been done before, and the standard model prohibits it. They crashed two monochromatic lasers together at very high voltages in a vacuum and created electron-positron pairs with measurable mass out of nothing but photons. Whoa. Now what does that tell us about mass? <laughs> mass is made out of light. It's a product. It's not an intrinsic a priori attribute of matter. It's not. Period. It just isn't. All right. You recognize this picture? In, a, in one manner of speaking, it's a standing wave, right? I want you to notice two things about it. It's starting to collapse. This is the Bose-Einstein condensate. Bose-Einstein condensate is the, is the product of minimal matter in a hard vacuum at one-tenth of a degree Kelvin above absolute zero. They had a hard vacuum, nine tor about 31 inches of mercury, pretty hard vacuum, okay? There's not much matter left in there, but when they drop that field down to one-tenth degree above absolute zero, 
what they ended up with was a, was a kind of matter that demonstrates some fundamental attributes. I want you to notice how this looks. From here to here to here to here is a perfect Fibonacci distribution. It's perfect. And the only difference between that shape and the one we looked at with the Fibonacci numbers is that's essentially a two-dimensional shape. But it is about to collapse into a vortex, which is three-dimensional and which has a spin rate. Right? So here's how we think it works. The physical vacuum, we won't argue about whether there is one or not. I mean, you've got the electrodynamic, stochastic, whatever kind of model you want to use. We've got all kinds of stuff that tells us. The Zitter Bevagung, uh, we've got Casimir effects. We've got all sorts of things in science that tell us that there is a physical vacuum. But what we know about the physical vacuum is that it is a fundamental primary field of undifferentiated information and potential. All right? And it is constantly agitated and exerting enormous pressure to express in some sort of organized form. That's its mission. That's what happens in the physical vacuum. And so, from the physical vacuum, at this interface called the zero point, then a very important thing happens. Undifferentiated potential, what we call a virtual ensemble, a potential field of informational attributes, as yet undifferentiated, intersects at some angle with another potential. Those virtual ensembles then interact to create the first manifestation of duality. And in this first manifestation of duality, which we call a subquark, referred to in the literature as a qubit, we know there are two kinds based on the CDF collaborations data. We know that the way they express in terms of the spin rate and other attributes that they demonstrate is dispositive about what they eventually combine to create. At this level, at the second scale, virtual ensembles at the first scale, qubits at the second scale, already demonstrate characteristics that are predictive and dispositive as to what they're going to become out here. Now that's really something. That, that is like a physical manifestation of certain differential equations. It they is. Mean, they behave the same way. Exactly. Exactly. And they're perfectly in compliance with Whitaker's formulation. In fact, they mirror his formulation, his prediction, perfectly. All right? Qubits, the subquark, they combine at some spin rate now. <coughs> There's no mass. We have no demonstration of any electromagnetic field effect. There is no strong nuclear force. There is no weak, no weak nuclear force. But there is the magnetic potential. And we know that like spins attract, opposite spins repel. Like spins attract, opposite spins repel. And even at that rate, Subquarks violate the Pauli exclusion principle because it's wrong to combine, they combine to create as a function of differentials in their spin, their time domain polarization, and other attributes, six quarks and 